Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating some easy home decor using the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. These are also known as the mini jingle blocks. Now these decor creations can be used in so many ways and in just about any space in your home. Now I've placed some of my favorite decorative accessories on these, but you can certainly customize these into your own personalized style of decor. Now as always, all of the projects I have complete supply lists in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and all the different ways I'll show you how to style these in your space. So now let's just jump right into the projects. Now this project is a frosted panel lantern. Now we're going to need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, some wood cubes from the Dollar Tree, and one pack of these chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to start off by laying down my silicone mat and grabbing my carpenter square I picked up from the Dollar Tree as well as my blocks. Now the first set of blocks we'll be joining together are two blocks. Now we're going to be joining together eight of the two block sets. Now I will be using my Surebonder wood stick hot glue to join these together, but you can definitely use wood glue. It just takes just a little bit longer. So once I join the two blocks together, we are going to repeat this until we have a total of eight. Now the second set of blocks will join together are sets of four, and we will be making eight sets of four of these blocks. Now we're going to join these together the same way we did the first time. You do want to make sure you flip your pieces over as you go. I find this prevents it from curving and waving. Now here is one of the four block sets, and we're going to repeat this until we have a total of eight. Now the last set of blocks we'll be joining are sets of seven, and we're going to be laying these side by side as shown here. Now we're going to be making two seven block sets in this case, and we're going to join these side by side. So I'm adding some of that wood stick hot glue in between the blocks, pressing them firmly together as you go. And don't forget, flip them as you go and wipe away any hot glue that oozes out of the seams. Now here is one completed seven block set, and we're going to repeat this until we have a total of two. So now that our pieces are done, we can start assembling our lantern frame. So grab two of the two block sets and two of the four block sets. So we're going to lay our two block set um, up on its vertical and then take one of the four block set and lay it and connect it to the bottom end. Now once that's bottom, flip the whole thing over and add another four block set at that corner as well using your wood stick hot glue. Now once that's bonded, flip the entire frame over and add another two block set on the other end and this will join and complete your frame. Now here is one of the completed frames and now we're just going to grab the rest of our two block sets and our four block sets and we are going to complete a total of four frames as shown here. So now we're going to take those two seven block sets and we're just going to join those together right down the center, just adding some of that wood stick hot glue right down that seam and pressing them firmly together. Now once you have this solid block, we are also going to grab four of those wood cubes and place it on the bottom. Now this will act as the bottom of our lantern, so these will be the little feet on the bottom. Now we're just going to add these on with a little bit of that wood stick hot glue. And here it is all put together. So now I'm going to grab my other mat and those chopping mats. Now these are nice and clear and have a, a matte side and a shiny side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out to fit in my frame. So I'm just going to lay my frames on the top and I'm tracing the inside. Now even though I do show three on here, four will actually fit on here. So just keep that in mind that you can get four frames out of one mat. So I'm just taking my pencil and I'm outlining the inside of each one of those frames. And you can see here how the pencil traces the inside to the mat. Now I will be cutting these out but you do want to leave a little edge around it. So I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch edge around the frame. So I'm not cutting it on the line. I'm cutting it about a quarter of an inch away from the line as shown here. So 
So once you have that piece done, go ahead and complete cutting out the remaining of your pieces. So we're going to set that to the side and we're going to start to paint our frame. So I'm going to, I doubled up my recipe here for two of my lanterns. So I'm laying out all of my pieces here and both of my bottoms. So I'm going to be painting this in some black acrylic paint and you could choose spray paint, chalk paint or any paint that you like. Now the way that I like to start painting when I paint by hand is painting the inside of the frames first and then I'll move on to painting the outsides. Now once the insides and outsides are done, I'll lay the frame flat on the surface and then I can add some paint to the top of the frame. Now we're going to repeat this for all of the frames. So here are all of the frames painted on one side and we also want to paint the bottoms as well. Now once that layer does dry, we are going to flip all of them over and we're going to paint the other side as well. And we just want to allow everything to completely dry as shown here. And now we can start working on adding our frosted panels. So I have all of my frosted panels all cut out of my chopping mats and I can start to apply them to my frames. So I'm gathering up the supplies for one frame, uh, or one lantern, and then I'm going to start adding my frosted insert. So I'm just gonna lay my frame down and the way I wanna glue these down is with the matte side facing down. So you wanna make sure the shiny side is facing you. And you notice our cut will have an overlap of the frame so we have enough room to adhere it. So I like to start by adding a bead at the top of the frame and then placing that chopping mat insert right on top. And this will just set the place for the rest of that mat to be adhered to each part of the frame. And then once that top is adhered, I'll add a couple of inches of glue on each side. Again, just securing the sides in place. And then once that is adhered, I'm gonna continue down and add another couple of inches of glue. I do like to do this in sections. It just works out so much better and the adhesion is so much more even. Then finally, I like to add some glue to the bottom, press it firmly into place, and here is one of your panels to your lantern. Now we're just gonna repeat this for the remaining panels and you'll see all of them are nice and secured in place. So now we're gonna take our panels and our bottom and start to assemble our lantern. So I'm gonna lay it with a good side facing down and then apply one of the side panels right on the side of the frame. So I'm adding a generous amount of that wood stick hot glue along the side of the frame. And then I'm gonna press the side of the adjoining piece right on top of it. Now we do wanna make sure that is nice and bonded and also nice and square. So now I'm gonna add another panel to the opposite side, again, adding a generous amount of that wood stick hot glue and then adding that side panel on. Now when that's finally done, we're gonna add two long beads of that wood stick hot glue along each edge and then place that final panel on the open end, just making sure that everything is nice and even. I love this glue. It gives you five to 10 seconds of working time to make sure everything is nice and in place. Now you do wanna make sure that everything is nice and square and looks good. So once everything is good to go, we can start to add the bottom face down on to our lantern. So go ahead and add another line of that wood stick hot glue right on that open end. Press the bottom into place until it's nice and secured. And there you have it. There is one of your lanterns all finished. And now I'm just gonna repeat this until my second lantern is done. And now we can decorate. And here are my two beautiful lanterns on display and I think they turned out amazing. Now I've placed some fairy lights from the Dollar Tree inside of these to give them a nice sparkle light glow. Now you can also use battery operated candles and even greenery if you like. Now, no matter how you choose to decorate these, they would look amazing in any space. Now, this project is a decorative wood tray. Now, we're gonna need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. 
Now we're going to gather up our mat and our ruler and our blocks to get started. Now the first set of blocks we'll be joining are sets of three blocks as shown here and we're going to be joining 12 three block sets. So we're just going to add that wood stick hot glue along the side of them, pressing them firmly together and flipping the blocks as you go until they're all nice and joined. Now once you have that one, you want to repeat this for a total of 12. And the second set of blocks will be joined together are three block sets in a line as shown here. Now we're going to be making a total of two of these. So go ahead and add the wood stick hot glue on the ends and then press them firmly until you have one long piece. Now once that one long piece is done, repeat this until you have a total of two. And the last set of blocks will be joined together are four block sets in a row. Now we're going to do this the same way we did for our three block sets and we're going to make a total of two of these. So now we're going to start adhering the, together the bottom of our tray. Now I'm taking my three piece sets and I'm rotating those squares in opposite directions just to give it a little bit of visual appeal. So I'm placing hot glue in between each one of those cubes, flipping them as I go, but I want to adhere four in a row for this row. Now once all four pieces are adhered together, you have this one solid strip and you're going to repeat this two more times for the remaining blocks until you have three rows of four. So now you're going to join all of these together, just making sure that when the blocks connect, they're all going opposite directions. And now we can join them together by adding a bead of that wood stick hot glue in between each one of those layers. Now once they're all joined, just squeeze them firmly together and now you have one solid base for your tray. So now we're going to work on the top of the frame. So we're going to take one of those three piece sets and we're also going to take one of those four piece sets. Now we're joining the four piece set right at the corner of that three piece set. Now we're going to flip it over and this time we're joining the four piece set a little differently. So just pay attention to that picture there so you make sure it's adhered correctly and then add a, a little dab of glue. This time placing that stick all the way in the corner and putting the frame right on top. So now you're going to flip it over and add that last three piece block set into that little area where it's open and it should fit nice and secure. Now if your blocks are adhered together perfectly for this it'll fit the bottom and frame out our tray perfectly at the end. So now we're going to work on our base. Now we're going to add the little pickets on the sides. So when we add our pickets we want to add a block at each one of the seams where the three piece block sets meet as shown here. So there'll be five blocks on the long side and two blocks on the short sides. So this is the general layout. So now we're going to start adhering them together. Now I've already adhered one side together, but what I did was just add a line of that wood stick hot glue to the bottom of the block and then placed it along the outside of the wood frame. Now here are all of my blocks all around the bottom frame of our tray. So now we can just add the top right on top of those pickets and you'll see that it fits perfectly. Now to do this, I am using my wood stick hot glue. I am applying this really quickly just to make sure I have enough working time, but you could also use wood glue for this project if you need more time. Just press that frame right on top of those pickets. Make sure everything is nice and even and solid. And here is your tray. So now I am going to take my tray and I am going to stain it with some Waverly antique wax. Now I really love the look of how wax gives these wood blocks, so I love to do this project. You can also paint or do any kind of finish that you like. So I'm just going to add it with a little rag, just making sure I get into all those cracks and crevices and making sure there's not a whole lot of wax buildup. You want to complete this for the entire tray inside and out, and you can use a paintbrush to get into all those small crevices. Now when your tray is all nice and dry, here it is, and now you just have to decorate. And here we have it, a super cute tray that you can decorate for your space. 
Now I've added some of my favorite farmhouse style decor to this tray, but you can add anything that you love. I think that the wood blocks look amazing with the antique wax in this project and I love how it turned out. You all have to let me know how you would decorate this tray for your space. Now this project is a wood three tier shelf. Now we're gonna need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna lay out my silicone mat and grab my blocks. Now, the first set of blocks that we're gonna be joining together are, are nine blocks in a row, and we're going to be making a total of three sets of these. So make sure you have your ruler handy and glue them all together. We are gonna be using the Sherbonda wood stick hot glue to glue them side by side, making sure you flip them as you go so they'll maintain a nice evenness all the way down. And here is one solid nine block set, and we're gonna repeat this until we have a total of three. Now the next set of blocks we'll be joining together are six blocks in a row. Now we're gonna be making four of these six block sets. So we're gonna join these together the same way we did the first time until we have a total of four. Now the last set of blocks we'll be joining together are three block sets in a row. So we're just gonna be joining these end to end with a wood stick hot glue, pressing them firmly, wipe away that hot glue that oozes out any of the seams. And we're gonna be making a total of six of these. So now we can start assembling our shelf. So grab one of the nine block sets and two of the three block sets. Now we'll be placing these on the edge. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a bead of the wood stick hot glue along the edge and place those three block sets up on its side and press it against your nine block set. Now we're gonna repeat this on the other side, adding another three block set to the other side. So you have two rails on each side as shown here. Now once that's done, we're gonna grab another two of those nine block sets until we have two more the same way for a total of three. So now what we're gonna do is grab two of the six block sets and we're gonna place one on each end of that rail piece we just made. Now these should fit snugly in between those little ledges and we're just gonna secure these in place with a bead of hot glue and stick those right back in there. I love that the rails add extra support to this even without the hot glue, but add hot glue just to make sure it's super sturdy. Now we are gonna do this for both sides of the, this level. So here is one of the levels of the shelf with both of those pieces secured together. So now we're gonna take one more of those rail pieces and add the six block sets to that for a total of two completed sets. Now to build up our shelves, we are just gonna connect these together as shown here. So I'm gonna add a bead of hot glue on each edge of one of the pieces and then add the other piece on top, just stacking it right on top. Now, as you see, here you go. You have two levels of your shelf completed. And now we just add that bottom piece. We're gonna add more of that wood stick hot glue to those edges and stick that right on top of that last level. And now we have a one solid shelf ready to go. So now we are going to finish this off. And of course, I'm gonna use my Waverly Antique Wax for this. And I'm gonna use a combination of a rag to apply this and also a paintbrush to get into all the cracks and crevices. Now I love that you can use the Waverly Wax instead of traditional stain if you're not really a traditional stain person. Plus the wax does really give it a quick and easy finish if you like to do this. So here you go. Here is my entire shelf all stained with that Waverly Antique Wax. So all you have to do now is let it sit to completely dry. And here is my shelf all nice and dry and we are ready to decorate. So here you have it. Here's my cute little shelf on display. Now I love the simplicity of this piece. Now this sturdy little shelf is perfect for your small trinkets and decor. And these are things that you might have on hand for small displays. 
Now you can also do many things with this like flip it around and now you have the shelves with the ledge side up. Now I love the little ledge because this way your little items don't slip off the edge. Now another option is flipping it on its side. Now I think this would be a perfect way to display your paints or craft supplies that you need to easily reach. Now this project is a set of candle or plant holders. Now we're going to be needing some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to lay out our mat, grab our ruler and our blocks. Now we're going to start off with four blocks and we are going to make uh, four blocks in a shape shown here. Now we're going to end up making eight of these blocks. So we're going to join them together as shown in the demonstration here. We're just going to make sure that they're all even and joined together. I can't express how important it is to use a ruler. It makes the perfect edge for your projects. So definitely make sure these are nice and even and square. And here is one of the pieces all finished and glued together. You do want to make sure it's even and we're going to make a total of 16 of these sets. So the next set of blocks we are joining together are three block sets and we're going to be making two sets of these. So we're just going to join these side to side as shown here. Now once you have one, just repeat until you have a total of two. So we're going to divide that up and grab eight of those squares. Now we're going to be stacking these on top of each other. So I'm making a diamond shape on top of each one of the squares, just adding a dot of that was decock glue on top of the square and placing the diamond shape nice and even on top. And then I'm just going to rotate it around and now I'm adding a square on that diamond. Again, just adding four beads of that wood decock glue right on top of there and then placing that square on top. Now this is the process that we'll be doing. We're going to do this throughout the entire project until all eight of them are used up and here are all eight stacked and ready to go. So now we're going to add that square at the bottom and this will act as a base and a cover. So add us a bead of wood glue around that square and just press it right in the center. And now you have a cover for the bottom and a stand for your project. And now we're going to repeat the whole process for the remaining pieces. So you have two complete pieces. So now we're going to finish these off in some Waverly antique wax. You could also paint as well or do any kind of finish that your heart desires. Now, since this has so much detail, I am going to use a paintbrush to get in all of the cracks and crevices of this. I find it very easy to spread this wax on this with a paintbrush. So definitely use this option to cover this project. So here is one of the pieces all covered on the inside and out. We're going to repeat it for the other piece and once they're all covered and you remove all the excess wax with a paper towel, just let them sit to completely dry. And here are the two pieces all nice and dry and we're ready to decorate. And check it out. How cute are these little succulent holders? Now I love the design of the staggered blocks in these pieces and it really gives visual appeal. And the wax finish is always a winner for these blocks. You guys have to let me know what you think of these as plant holders. Now for candles, I just flip them over and placed a candle holder and a battery votive inside. How easy is that? Now I absolutely love being able to create DIYs with so many uses and I really hope that you have fun with these projects. Now as always, I love them all, but let me know in the comments which one was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. 
thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.